What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to the live reading of The Bobby Dots Part 1. I am taking a few moments to just breathe because this story apparently is mind blowing. Like, th this story, I think Entom, who was doing the live reading, thank you, Entom, uh, I, th I think he said it was a 9.8 out of 10. <laughs> and that means that this story is wild. I've heard that it is super connected to everything. I've heard that it's just absolutely insane big reveals. Uh, and I've also heard, of course, that it is part one of two, which means that, of course, it is a big deal. And I'm just so, so excited for what this is going to be. Um, as I'm speaking, uh, Entom has only read through the first third, so we're gonna just read through this and then I'll cut to later on when we've read the entire thing. But um, yeah, let's just get straight in this. Uh, obviously, if you've if you've seen my other reaction videos, uh, the same thing applies uh, with the fact that like Entom is leaking this very very early, so be careful with uh, sharing spoilers and stuff. Anyway, breathe. I'm just super excited to get into this, honestly. Even the greener grass has weeds. Abe smiled at the memory of his mother's words. Of course she'd pop into his head now. She always did whenever he was converting something he didn't have. And Abe was definitely converting, or co covert, coverting. Coverting? Yeah, big time. Emitting a fingernails on chalkboard like Screech, Abe's vinyl desk chair protested as he leaned back further to get a better view of the Fazplex Tower. The narrow window near his desk in the Pizzaplex security office revealed just the tiniest sliver of the tower. But the, sil but the sliver was enough to distract Abe from what he was supposed to be focused on. Abe had a pile of work orders to get through and he was paying and he was trying to pay attention to an online leadership class but he couldn't keep his gaze off the tower sun glinted off the sleek silver steel frame and the shiny glass of the 40 story tower making the building look like the modern palace of a wealthy ruler Abe could have sworn he could see a glow radiating from the building but that was probably his imagination Living in the Fazplex Towers was larger than life to him. Accurate description of the security breach office style. Yeah, sort of. I think you were... He was doing this. I mean, I don't really know... I don't know. I feel like I'm, I've missed out on context already, but I, I, I get it. I think I'm getting it. Compared to the greener grass of the majestic tower, this room was a weed-infested wasteland of yellowed scrub. The grey painted walls were decorated only with the Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex logo and a few curling Freddy Fazbear security posters. Okay, so yeah, he's in like an office kind of situation. Um, the floor's carpet, a slightly lighter shade of the grey than the walls, had a star patterned motif, but the stars did little to enhance the space. The desks, filing cabinets and shelving in the office were all black metal. Nothing about the office was comfortable or inviting. But it was, for the moment, the only real home Abe had. Abe returned his attention to his computer screen. As he tried to focus on the online lecturer's words and the work orders he was supposed to be getting through, the image of his mum's sweet, round, freckled face filled his mind. She'd had such a hard life, his mum. She was only 43, and she was in long-term care with a degener degenerative illness. Greener grass and the duality of Abe's parental figures is something that reoccurs for his morality in the story. Keep this in mind. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Still, she never complained, even though she'd been married to a man who had made her life miserable, because he was always trying to get to the greener grass, and he taught his two sons to try to get there too. This is really... This is like poetry. <laughs> it's great. Uh, hey, I, are you about done for the day, Abe? Abe paused the lecture and looked at Rodin, his colleague and his closest friend, dark-skinned and dark-haired, dark -haired, uh, and also ridiculously handsome. Rodin, who was also tall and fit, had a big white-toothed smile. There was a magnet to nearly every woman who saw him. 
That smile was aimed at Abe now. Abe was able to resist the magnetism, but he still found the smile contagious. <laughs> Why have you copied that? Okay. Uh, in spite of his wistful mood, he grinned back at his friend even as he shook his own pasty, oh sorry, pasty, pasty, red head and not any kind of handsome head. I still have a stack of these to get through. Abe tapped the work orders. Rodin's smile dimmed for a nanosecond. Rodin's sad too. Well, we'll all be at L Chips. You remembered it's Nell's birthday, right? Abe nodded, even though he'd completely forgotten. Sure. He was flushing because of the lie. Oh yeah, one thing about this story is apparently it's really, really long. Like, it, it takes up most of the book. Um, Abe looked down at his work from the corner of his eye. He watched Rodin fuss with his longish hair. Rodin was unaware of his good looks. It's not even subtle this time. You haven't come out with the crew in weeks. Rodin said. What's up with that? Aiden shook his head. Oh, Aiden? Abe shook his head. Sorry, I just have a lot. You coming, Rodin? We're waiting. A woman's voice called out. Abe recognised the voice. It belonged to Carol. She worked in the admin offices. He didn't know her well, and he didn't want to. She was loud and pushy, but at least she'd spared him the strain of coming up with a believable story about why he never went out with his friends anymore. Coming, Rodin called back. He gave Abe a long look. Don't work too late. Abe didn't have to reply because Rodin strode out of the office. The four other people who shared the space trailed after him. Everybody want him, bro. Abe was now alone in a big, dingy room. The computer screens on the other desks glowed, and the overhead fluorescent lights hummed. The electronics were now Abe's only company. Fluorescent lights cameo. 11pm. Uh, now entering utility tunnels. Not just the utilidors but the back hallways too. Okay, this, wait, this is sick. So he's actually in the Mega Pizzaplex. Like, we, we, we've heard a lot about Mega Pizzaplexes in the stories before, but we never really know if it is the security breach Mega Pizzaplex. I'm pretty sure this is the Mega Pizzaplex. Um, Abe's soft colored salt shoes slapped thin beige industrial grade carpet in a shuffle tap cadence as he cautiously negotiated the back halls of the pizzaplex. It was nearly midnight, and by now the pizzaplex was mostly deserted. This is before the staff program. Yeah, good, good to point out. That's a very good, that's a very good detail to point out. Just a couple guards patrolled the complex, and for the most part, they stayed in the public areas. Even so, another guard monitored the video feeds in the main security viewing room. Therefore, Abe had to be careful to avoid the camera's position throughout the pizzaplex. Electronic eyes were everywhere, even in the employee areas. Not for the first time, Abe shook his head at how bland the back areas of the pizzaplex were. It goes into him in a monologuing about how bright the pizzaplex is. <laughs> Too true. Um, the public areas of the entertainment complex were all about colour and bright lights. Neon pulsed everywhere. Everything was painted some eye-boggling, vibrant hue. Back here, though, all was subdued. Varying shades of grey paint on the walls joined the beige carpet in the halls to paint a bland canvas of dull. But at least there were fewer cameras back here. Uh, trivia note, there are very little cameras in the back hallways in Game and Security Breach. That's very cool. Um, Abe worked his way toward the hallway labyrinth and finally reached his destination, the trash collection area behind the main dining room. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's actually a thing. Right, so we are able to follow his route, basically. These There's dumpsters in this room. Couldn't find a good screenshot, but you can, in fact, trace Abe's steps in Security Breach. That's really cool. That's great. There, in a dark brown and only mildly smelly dumpster, he found what he was looking for, his dinner. Abe pushed aside a pile of paper cups and shifted through a stack of half-eaten pizzas. Rejecting pieces that had, uh, that had bites taken from them, Abe finally snagged two relatively untouched pieces of sausage and sun-dried tomato pizza from a disposable pizza pan. Pulling out the paper tower he'd plucked from the, main, the men's room, uh, he transferred the pizza to the towel and he scurried down the hall to a dark, unmonitored corner. Bro's a creature. 
Singing to the floor, he curled his lips at the sun-dried tomatoes. He carefully plucked them off the pizza and then bit into the first cold slice. The shiny fat on the cold pork sausage had congealed and its texture wasn't pleasing, but beggars couldn't be choosers. Abe is in fact homeless. When Abe had first started working at the Pizzaplex, he'd loved pizza. Having pizza every day was a perk of the job. Not, now not so much. Pizza wasn't good when it was your only choice. Chewing slowly and listening to be sure he remained alone, Abe tried to remember when he had choices about his life. It wasn't that long ago, but it felt like forever. Abe hadn't dreamed of working at the Pizzaplex. He had planned to be an entrepreneur, like his dad. Abe's dad hadn't yet succeeded in any of his business ventures, most of which bordered on shady, but Abe had been sure he'd been able to do better. He figured he had the best of his mum and dad. Like his dad, he was a big dreamer. He had a vision. Unlike his dad, though, Abe cared about other people. He didn't just want to make money. He wanted to do good in the world, like his mum. Until she had gone sick, his mum had been a house cleaner her whole adult life. She'd cleaned the houses of people who had the kind of money Abe's dad was always trying and failing to get. But she was okay with that. She said her work made life better for other people. Abe liked that idea. He wanted to do that too. Although his parents didn't have the money to put Abe through college, Abe had mad tech skills. He was self-taught and he was good. And now he was taking the online classes he needed so he could get a promotion to team leader. Um, when he finished the last of his pizza and he stood scurrying down the hall, he cut it close. The sound he'd heard was one of the guards. Abe began scuttling as quietly as he could. He ran through the pizzaplex until he found himself into a back utility tunnel that led to Roxy's raceway. Abe weaved his way through the hallways behind the venues and ducked into a tunnel that extended away from Roxy Raceway. That's the cut utilidor. Oh my gosh. So, wow. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, if you didn't know, there were loads of pathways from attractions that were, that were cut from Security Breach, of course, because it was such a big game and everyone was so ambitious. Oh my god, Entom is typing. <laughs> so you probably can't see that, it's probably too low on the screen. But um, Entom is currently typing, so maybe he is, is he's carrying on. Um, they're still canon, it seems. Although the back hallways and tunnels of the Pizzaplex were dimly lit, this area was relatively bright. The pink and purple neon lights of the miniature raceway spilled out over the metal floor tiles of this behind-the-scenes area. Abe easily worked his way beyond a row of junk cars and a couple stacks of engine parts. On the other side of a pile of crates, he ducked down and scooted past the neon pink wheels of a motorbike lying on its side. The bike hid a small opening in the mound of race car tyres. Abe dropped to his knees and crawled through the opening. After just a few feet of crawling, Abe ended up inside a tent-like enclosure of rubber that sheltered what Abe, for hopefully not much longer, called his bedroom. Okay. So... Wait, 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 wait. After a few feet of crawling... Wait. Okay. Right, so he... Oh, so he's homeless, so he lives in the pizza plex. Yeah, he lives... I thought he lived in the first plex. Okay, never mind. I don't... I'm I'm a little bit confused, but let's just continue. Abe scooted into his sleeping, in, onto his sleeping bag and checked to be sure the cardboard box next to the bag still contained the clothes and toiletries he'd stashed in it. He really didn't need to check it. The sleeping bag uh, hadn't been disturbed, so obviously no one had been here. His hidey hole was still a secret. Oh, so that's why he was, like, paranoid of cameras. That's good to know. That's... That's, this is really cool. Wait, so are we going to be able to find this this hidey hole in, uh, in Security Breach? That would be really cool if, if we were able to, but we probably won't be able to. Let me just have a drink quick. I've actually, I'm actually recording this straight after recording um, the, uh, the animatronic apocalypse. Uh, and my voice is going because I've been speaking for like one and a half hours. Uh... <laughs> Uh, he inhaled the familiar scent of rubber and motor oil as he stretched. He was tired, but he was also wide and tense. These days, he was always tense. That's what being homeless did to a person. You never felt safe and secure, especially if you were camping inside a place like the Pizzaplex. Although Abe's job included servicing many of the animatronics in the Pizzaplex, he really wasn't a big fan of the robots. Roxanne Wolf was one of his least favourites. What? <laughs> she was supposedly deactivated by this time of night. Roxy wasn't any kind of threat. 
But a couple weeks ago, that sentiment changed. It seems initially they weren't supposed to be active by night. Interesting. As Abe had been hiding to his hidey hole, um, oh gosh, he'd gotten a glimpse of Roxy stalking past one of the doorways to the raceway. It had freaked him out. Since then, he'd been even more on edge than usual. They aren't supposed to move around, it seems. Something changed recently. Wow. Uh, Abe had listened for several seconds and assured himself that he was still alone. Satisfied, he could pull out his laptop so he could write his daily email to his mother. Good son. Hi, Mum. Did you have a good day today? Did you get the lemon jello you like, or was it the cherry one you hate? I'm doing great. I'm still taking classes. That promotion is going to be mine soon. I'm all settled into my cosy room for now, ready for sleep. Wish we were together so we could watch a good movie. I love you. Oh. Abe sighed. He didn't like lying to his mother. <laughs> Wait, this is so heartbreaking. Oh, no. I don't know if I can read this. I don't I don't actually know if I'm gonna be able to read the story. This is very heartbreaking. Okay. He thought of this as bending the truth. His room was as cozy as he could make it. Abe closed his laptop and set it aside. He tried to clear his mind so he could go to sleep, but as often as it did uh, but as of, as it often did, his mind meandered down the road that had led him to this rubber enclosed den. A year before, after several failed online business attempts and several more dead end jobs, Abe had landed his current position at the Pizzaplex. Getting the job was a feat, especially since he had none of the credentials this job required. So this is the thing with this story. He was raised by a good mom, but a criminal and shady dad. Therefore, he takes good after his mom, but the skills of a criminal from his dad. I see, I see. Very well. This is good, like, um, character building. Accustomed to doing whatever it took to get what he wanted, a talent from his dad, Abe had faked his resume. Oh. He didn't think he felt a little bad about lying. He didn't think he was doing anything that terrible. He had, after all, every skill necessary to do the work. He'd just gotten those skills in ways that employees always dismissed as irrelevant. A week after he had gotten the job, his mum had been diagnosed with early onset dementia. And a few weeks after that, it had already taken so much. No! <laughs> oh my gosh, this story is wild already. It's, it's very real. I think I think this story already is is kind of just obviously it's in the mega pizza plex it's not actually real but it just feels it feels more real than a lot of the other stories we've had um the house got foreclosed and his mom ended up in a long-term care by then Abe's dad was long gone he had moved across the country to chase after another questionable business deal after all that he'd ended up here in a makeshift tire hut living on discarded pizza and playing hide-and-seek with security guards every night. Abe closed his eyes, listening hard to make sure, ev to make sure nothing, human or not, was nearby. Abe willed his, mus his muscles to relax. He filled his inner vision with the image of the Fazplex Tower. Do you guys forget about Fazcorp? He thought about the tower. The lower 20 floors of the towers housed Fazbear corporate offices. The Fazplex Towers is the Fazbear Entertainment HQ. <gasps> No way! What? It's the Fazbear Entertainment HQ? Does that mean... Does that mean the first story in the Bobby Dot's conclusion... And I, I don't mean the Bobby Dot's conclusion. I mean the one with the, um, the board of directors. Is that going to take place in the Fazplex Towers? I'm going to faint. This is so good. This is so good. The Fastback Towers is the Fastback Entertainment HQ. Wow. Okay. 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 The upper twenty floors were filled with high-tech apartments. The top half of the tower also included a common area for parts, a state-of-the-art gym, and a rooftop swimming pool and hot tub. Damn. I want to live here. All this was reserved for people who held the higher level positions at the Pizzaplex and Fastback Entertainment. These lucky people got to live for free in that tower. Wow, that's what's behind the level 10 doors. <laughs> when Abe got his promotion, he'd be one of the lucky employees. With that hopeful thought in his mind, Abe drifted off to sleep. Okay, I see, I see. During SB, or Security Breach, sorry, uh, this literal fucking uh, Fast Entertainment HQ is right next to the building. Wait, and that's why since there's so many pizza plexes, this is the only one that's important. Because it's the HQ of Faz. 
Oh, Anton, you've outdone yourself. <laughs> oh, that makes so much sense. <laughs> that makes so much sense. So, hang on. So, I'm, I'm a bit confused. So, sorry I'm going to be going through this story kind of slowly because it's an important story. You can already tell that. But, so... Okay, I'm assuming that, so, I'm assuming you get, um, I'm a, I'm a little bit lost. So the Fazplex Towers aren't actually in the Megapizzaplex, they're next to it. Do we, do we know that from this story, or do we know that from Security Breach? I'm assuming we know that from this story. But, uh, that's, that's interesting. That's a very good point, that, um, that this is the only one with the Fazbear Entertainment HQ. So that's why the security breach one is important. That's where everything is going to go down, including burn trap. So that is very good to know. So this story is going to be very connected, I can tell. Um, transition cut to the morning. Abe hesitated at the doors leading out into the main lobby of the Pizzaplex. I wonder why the elevators aren't there. What do you mean? Wait. As in... That elevator? What, because it goes to the Fazplex Towers? No way. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm a little bit lost. I'm a, I'm a tiny bit lost. <laughs> Just a little bit. He listened. It was early, well before 6am, and the Pizzaplex was hours from opening. The cleaning crew, which worked in the pre-dawn hours of the morning, would be, check would be clocking in right now. The security guards usually took a break out about this time. He looked right and left down the main walkway of the Pizzaplex. Although all the neon signs and decor were lit up, the black and white checkered walkway was deserted, as Abe knew it would be. This time in the morning, the Pizzaplex smelled like bleach and floor polish. He discovered video coverage wasn't at all optimal. It was easy for him to find a variety of convoluted routes through the office, uh, between, between the office, the dining area, his hidey hole, and where he was headed now, one of the large men's restrooms. By the way, that said, restroom is the staff restroom shown at the beginning of Security Breach, where we first see Chica. Oh my god, that is crazy! That's... this is so good, this is so canon. <laughs> first, he skirted around the huge gold statue of the Pizzaplex's lead animatronic glam rock friend. They really, they genuinely wrote this story and then made Security Breach from it, I reckon. That's probably why Security Breach isn't as optimized as it could be, because they had to take everything from the story and make sure that it was polished as frick and make sure that everything worked. That might have even be why the Utilidors were cut, right? Oh my gosh. The massive bear in the top hat held his mic stand and lauded it over the lobby. Same pose, yeah. He moved from tree to tree as, until he passed a neon sign that read, Glamrock Gifts. From there, he pressed himself against the wall and sidestepped past the entrance to <laughs> Pizza Plex's lounge to the Faz Pad. This is insane. This is literally, like, you cannot deny this. This is completely in the same continuity. All of these things in green text are direct quotes from the story. They had the audacity to actually name drop these things in placement, yeah. He made his way around the Faz Pad uh, and into the back staff bathroom. I'm proud of him. Hey, by the way, we're only at page 12. <laughs> what? Oh, no. 12 of, like, 100, by the way. So, this is this is going to take so long to get through. I'm so sorry. Um, for immersion, BRB, now just discuss. Yeah, so this is this is the, uh, the room he's in. Uh, Abe is brushing his teeth. Abe had gotten ridiculously proficient at taking spit baths. That was what they called a showerless bathing in the Old West. Abe looked at his image in the mirror. Cool, there are mirrors. Great. Sometimes his face looked like his mom's more than his own. She had a big smile, not unlike Rodin. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, wait. Yeah, okay, Rodin was from this story. Uh, for some reason, I thought Rodin was from Animatronic Apocalypse. I'm so weird. Uh, he also had her blue eyes and soft features that made him look as threatening as a teddy bear. Plush, not an animatronic. As long as he could take care of his mom, for all he knew, he would never be homeless. Just as Abe was tucking all his toiletries away in his uh, dop kit, uh, the restroom door quickly flew open. 
Abe quickly hid, behind, hid the kit behind his back and turned. Hey, Abe, what are you doing here so early? A short, balding man said. Oh, hey, Evan. For goodness sake. <laughs> Evan is back. Oh, God. <laughs> that should be a better question for you. I thought team leaders didn't have to keep such early hours. Evan wore a team leader shirt. Abe's deflection worked. Evan, one of the lucky guys who got to live in the Fazplex Tower for free, laughed. That's true, usually, but I left early yesterday to go to my kids' hockey game, and I have some catching up to do. I couldn't miss the game. One of our Bobby Dots taught our kid a new move. You should have seen him racing around our apartment with the Bobby Dots cheering him on. They're such a hoot. Bobby Dots? Abe asked. Oh, didn't you know? The tower's apartments now have holographic systems, state of the art, truly lu lu lux, uh, as in luxury. The Bobby Dots are holographic assistants, but what about that cover? I wonder what it could be. Good point, good point. Maybe we'll find out anywho. Um, while Evan is busy rambling, Abe secretly ran out of the bathroom when he wasn't looking. Goofball. Have a great day, Evan yelled out and sighed as he went into the bathroom stall. Bro was gonna shit. <laughs> Shaken by his close cool, Abe left the back hallway and retraced his steps back to his hidey hole. As he trotted through the lobby, Abe looked up through the glass dome above the golden Glamrock Freddy statue. By tilting his head at an angle, he could see the top of the Fazplex Tower. Okay, so it is up the elevator, right? I assume. Okay. Wait, no, because isn't above the above the lobby is that that weird place? Because you can, like, go to the top of the... I don't freaking know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I haven't even played Security Breach. How would I know? Uh, apparently, canonically, that is an actual window as seen in concept art. Yes! Yeah! You're right. You're right. I remember what concept art you're talking about. Soon, he said to himself. Transition cut to work day. He's in his office. All is well. Right. oh Two hours into his work day, Abe suddenly got a call requesting Abe to the administrator's office. Abe hadn't been called by admin before, so he was nervous, his hand shaking as he held up the phone. Oh no. Where are you going? Roden asked. I'm being called to admin, not sure what's going on. Roden leaned back in his chair and crossed his arms. Uh oh. What did you screw up? Well, you better get it. If admin says jump, then jump. Roden continued. Uh, he has been called to the admin offices located in the Fazbear Entertainment HQ, the Fazplex Towers. Obviously, this might be cut off in-game, but the towers are directly behind the Plex. And also, there's an entrance through the back staff utility tunnels that he's going through. Oh, okay. Oh, of course that makes sense that it would be through the utility tunnels, because it's only for staff, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that, by the way. I, I had no idea where the the towers were. The hallway widened and the beige carpet gave to a plush red. The decor shifted too. No more grey walls or curling posters here. Sunny yellow walls were hung up with framed colourful paintings of Freddy Fazbear characters. This is the richest thing Abe has ever seen. They have a polished, carved wooden door that enters the admin building. Beyond the double doors, a young, nerdy receptionist looked up from a long, narrow desk. Abe Thayer? Bro is just nodding while gul gulping like a nervous cartoon character. The receptionist nodded. Second door on the left. Abe gave her a nervous smile as he went in the direction she'd indicated. Sweat trickled down his neck as he went down the hallway to the second door on the left. Imagine, imagine we go into the Fazplex Towers in ruin. Imagine if that's something that we have to do. If it is, I will die of joy, of glee. I wouldn't even care what the game is like. I... I just want the Fazplex Towers in the game. <laughs> the door opened and a grey-haired businesswoman in a pale pink suit looked up from a glass-topped desk. Abe? This is a Fazbear Entertainment admin. Sit, sit. The, point, the woman pointed to one of the red plush chairs. The woman came around and sat on the other red plush chair. Um, Fazbear Entertainment admins have hella drip, by the way. She held out a heavy hand with golden rings. She's not the CEO. Okay, good to know. But she's part of the board of directors. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. That's insane. This story. This story, this story, this story, this story. What is going on? I need a drink again. <clears throat> Let me just sink that in.
Like that, I need a while to sink that in, that to get that to sink in. This is insane. I hope you guys are enjoying my reactions because, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me know in the comments, by the way, if you have already read all of this or if you're just here for my reactions. Uh, I'm assuming that a lot of people are here to to read this, so um, you're probably having the same reaction as me. But board of directors, we might be meeting Margaret Waterman again in the next story. <laughs> Literally, in the next story, five x one. New director of personnel. Oh, new director of personnel. That's great. Abe swallowed hard. The new director of personnel. New directors often made new cuts. Was Abe one of those cuts? My predecessor apparently did not like face-to-face -face meetings, but I do. Oh, okay. Abe sat back in his chair and squirmed softly. Uh, am I in trouble? Cartoon character head ass. No, no, quite the contrary. I called to tell you the promotion you applied for is yours. Yes! <laughs> yes, Abe. Abe blinked twice to make sure he heard what he thought he'd heard. Yes, she said promotion. I thought the position wouldn't be available until it opened up sooner than we expected. Margaret cut him off. Yeah, but I want to know why. <laughs> Margaret reached for a folder and flipped it open. I see you haven't yet received one of the certificates needed for the position, but you're involved, uh, sorry, enrolled in the requisite class, correct? Abe nodded several times. He's about to tear up. Dude went from homeless to getting an apartment. Yeah, it all seems to be going well. Excellent. Well, your job performance is superb, so we're willing to give you the promotion on the condition of completing the certificate. You must complete it within the next month. Will that be a problem? Abe nodded several times. No, no, not at all, ma'am. Margaret stood up, and so he followed. Although his legs were so rubbery from shock and relief, he was surprised they held him up. Congratulations, Abe. Margaret shook his hand once again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks a lot, he repeated himself. Abe practically floated out of Margaret's office. Yeah, Abe is a babe. <laughs> For the next hour, he was caught up with the next steps and received his Team 2 leader badge. The receptionist told him to go down further and he'll find another receptionist who will set him up with his apartment. Bro is walking like that one scene in Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire where he's pointing at everyone and smiling. <laughs> Abe didn't so much walk into the burgundy plush office as he sailed in. He was getting so over the moon by getting his promotion that he couldn't stop grinning. Ah, oh, I feel so good for him. Ah, oh, the admin offices are about what you'd expect out of the future. Something like Arasaka. I don't know what Arasaka is. Someone, someone give me some, uh, tell me what that is in the comments. Uh, the administrative offices of the tower were everything Abe thought they would be. In addition to the carpet that felt like he was cuddling his feet, the office were filled with rich, bright colours, shiny chrome light fixtures, gleaming darkwood panelling. Uh, crystal clear, huge windows looked out over the pizza plex. A petite blonde wearing a dress that matched the decor was perched on a stool behind a long counter. Can I help you? The woman, her name tag reading Jen, asked. Hi Jen, I'm Abe, Abe Thayer. I was just named Team 2 Leader and I'm here to get my apartment assignment. Jen flashed him a big smile. Congratulations, Abe. She clacked her pink painted nails over her keyboard. There you are. I'll just... Oh. Jen's smile faded. She looked from the screen to Abe and back from the screen again. Oh, what? Abe asked her. She chewed on her lower lip and twisted her mouth. I'm sorry, but there isn't any apartments available right now. None. But I thought the tower had an apartment for every high-level employee in Fazbear Entertainment. Jen looked at her screen again. Well, there is one apartment empty. I love where this is going. This is such a great setup for the story. It's so... it feels so natural, right? It's like... oh my gosh, yeah. Great, so it shouldn't be a problem. Well, well what? Well, the issue is the empty apartment is off-limits. What does that mean? It just means it can't be assigned. For how long? Jen looked at him regretfully. Indefinitely. Some of Abe's, ri uh, Abe's fears went away. But not all of it. Abe leans over the counter to look at the computer screen. What's wrong with the apartment? He asked. Jen shrugged. Doesn't it say? He persisted. Jen shrugged. It says off limits. Okay, but why? 
The apartments in this building are very high tech. My guess would be that there are glitches in the system in this one. Well, if that's all it is, I can handle it. I'm pretty tech savvy. I can fix whatever's wrong. Jen shook her head. I'm sorry, but that isn't allowed. If the system says it's off limits, I can't let you move in, no matter what. I really am sorry. But I really am sorry, but I have to go with what the computer says. Abe didn't care about what Jen's computer said. Abe had gotten past more insurmountable obstacles than words on a computer screen. He'd get the apartment somehow, but how? He waved Jen goodbye and strode down the hall, thinking about how he was going to get into the apartment. Then he suddenly had an idea. At the main doors, Abe paused. He turned and rushed back toward the office. Jen, he said as soon as he entered, someone is at the main door for you. He has a couple dozen roses. He says he needs your signature. Jen's eyes lit up. Roses? For me? Her shoulders slumped as she looked around. I'm not supposed to leave the desk. <laughs> I'm not a man in a hurry. How about I man the desk for you while you go get your flowers? Jen hesitated and raised an eyebrow. You'd do that for me? Sure. As soon as Jen was out of sight, Abe raced around the counter. She hadn't logged out. Good. He's now entering the system. It took Abe just a few seconds to change the status from off limits to available. Now he needed to enter the tenant spot. Okay, so what happened in this apartment? The computer, however, wouldn't let him do that. It wouldn't let him change the name. Landon Prout was apparently super glued into the system. Although Landon's name remained, the screen prompted. Resync work pass to apartment access card. Abe clicked yes. The screen prompted scan work pass. He scanned his work pass. The screen immediately flashed. Work pass apartment access synced. Generating security clearance badge and updated room key card. So you know this little security badge badges in a security breach. There's they are apparently 3D printers for security badges. The 3D printer spit out a new security badge and a keycard. That's pretty cool. I love that. Abe snatched the cards as soon as he heard Jen's footsteps approaching down the hallway. Mission successful. Abe rushed to the former side of the counter and nonchalantly stared out the window. The delivery guy didn't wait, Jen sighed. I missed him. I'm really sorry we don't have an apartment for you. Abe shrugged. I understand. It's okay. He waved at Jen as he left the office. Transition cut, he's going into the elevator to the apartment. Abe had to get to work right after he got his pass. It was his first day as team leader, and getting used to his duties kept him occupied all day. Even so, he couldn't stop thinking about the apartment that waited for him. He couldn't wait to see his new home. It time skips to the end of his work day. He's on his way home after a late shift and retrieved all his items after removing the Roxy Raceway hideout he was in. Ah, uh, so that's why the, the hideout probably isn't there anymore in the game. It was even later until he finally got off the elevator on the 22nd floor of the tower. The same carpeting of the, the, same carpeting of the administrator's office um, covered the hallway. It was great. It cut down on noise. The walls seemed to sound... The walls seemed to be soundproof, though. Um, oh, no. That way, that's not a good thing. The soundproof walls, that's never a good thing. <laughs> the lower walls had polished wood wa wainscot. Woven burgundy and silver fabric stretched from the wood trim up to the arched ceiling. Halfway down the hallway, a couple women exited an apartment, laughing. Clearly just for a party, they came down the hall chattering happily. When they spotted him, they both smiled. Hey! Abe simply nodded back. He lives in apartment 2217. Damn it, it's not 1280. <laughs> um, Abe smiled. He finally made it. I'm so proud. This is the modern apartment of all time. The entryway is tiled, and it led to a foyer-esque area that branches out to a sitting area, a kitchen area, and a dining area. The dining area opens up to an office on the left side, and the sitting area opened up to a bedroom. Apparently each room isn't closed off like normal rooms. The walls are similar to office cubicles. They extend up to the ceiling, but the upper half of the walls are made of glass. There's also glass screens topping the walls, which are also framed in chrome. They extend to four feet above the half walls. Now you're about to meet the greatest thing that FNAF has ever done in years. Okay, great, 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 great. It was neat and clean, and it was his, sort of. Abe took another step, and as he did, 
The nearest glass wall, rising up from the partition at the edge of the wall, lit up. There is no elephant. You took that too literal. You want to know what it really is? Okay. I, I don't want to look. I don't want to look. Oh, I'm breathing. Okay, I need a drink. I need a drink. I'm panicking. Like, what is it going to be? Is it going to be Afton? No, I'm joking. It's <laughs> just Afton living in a room. Okay. I haven't, I haven't looked at the, at the sentence. I'm assuming... What, could, what is it going to be? My prediction. I don't even know what it's going to be. It's going to be something to do with the bobby dots, right? Obviously. <laughs> it has to be the bobby dots. Otherwise, like, what's the point of the bobby dots? I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be the bobby dots. I don't know if it's going to be a character. I don't know if it's going to be some sort of, con like, heavy connection to the security breach or something. Okay, I'm going to have a look in three, two, one, now. A bright-faced holographic girl with what looked like long, hot, pink, pink pigtails popped up on what Abe realised was a see-through computer screen. Hi, anime woman. Well, that is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Hang on a second. Wait, 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 wait. I am, I'm going to, wait, I'm going to look this up. That if this is true, this is insane. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. Ooh, ooh. Um, it could be that. I think it is that. So let me let me tell you what I'm thinking about. I literally made a video on it um, yesterday as as I'm recording this. This could be the VR sisters, because we've never seen, we've never seen the VR sisters before. Like, who are the VR sisters? And my theory was that it was Tape Girl and Vanessa. Uh, but one of them does have long, hot pink pigtails. And of course, it's, it's like a holographic girl as well. And because it's a VR sister, obviously it would, it would only be like, it would be like a, a VR kind of computer holographic thing. But uh, anime women, I like. I'm I'm confused why this is big. Okay, maybe I'm maybe I'm just missing the point. Uh, uh, you guys joke about Jiffany, but this story literally has cinematic shots like her. Hi, the girl said. Her voice was sweet and high pitched, like that of a perky cheerleader. Uh, hi. Abe studied the girl and realized she wasn't exactly a girl, or mo more so human. She was an AI. It felt impolite to call out that she was digital. You're cute, the girl said. What's your name? I'm three. Huh. Okay. With an ab abundantly... Yeah. With an abundantly noticeable bust, she wore a white and grey bell bottom bodysuit striped with the same hot pink as a long pink... Okay, wait, wait, wait. I need to look up this VR sister again. So, with an abundantly noticeable bust... Okay. She wore a white and grey... White and grey bell bottom bodysuit striped with the same hot pink. Okay, it's not identical. It's not identical to the VR sisters, but it's close. It's pretty close. She had a large heart shaped face. Okay, I don't know if this is the VR sisters then. But that would be really cool if it was. Like that would actually connect and it would it would show that they've they've been planning everything since even um uh, Fury's Rage. Um, she had a heart-shaped face with an unnaturally large, uh, hot pink cat-like eyes. She had a bow-shaped mouth under a small protrusion that must have been her nose. Show up, anime girls. You bastards didn't expect this to be the bobby- No way, this is the bobby dots. What? <laughs> and guess what? She's sentient. Don't you talk? Three asked. I thought all humans talked. If you don't talk, we'll have to figure out some kind of sign language or something. I can talk, Abe said. I'm just surprised, that's all. Three giggled, and the neon pink of her pigtails danced around her face. You surprised me too. We haven't had any visitors in a while. We? Three waved a grey hand. Oh, don't worry about that. What do I call you? My name's Abe. Hi, Abe. That's a good name. I liked it. I like it, sorry. Three suddenly winked, and the holograph went out. Abe blinked to the now clear glass. This is just the beginning, but I love the Bobby Dots. I can't wait for you to see the others. Oh my gosh. Oh no. 
It transitions to him trying to ignore what just happened. He's looking around the kitchen and checking to see if all the appliances and amenities are working properly. He wants to find out why the apartment was closed off in the first place so he could fix it. Abe was walking over to the office area when three reappeared on the half wall between the office and the dining area. Oh, that's not my area, three chirped. But I make sure it's clean. That's part of what I do, she smiled. I'm the diet and lifestyle Bobby Dot. Oh, they each have different things like like that there that they do. Okay. Abe turned to look at three, who had struck up a cutie pose and twirling one of her pigtails. We must stay focused, brothers. That's kind of hot, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bobby Dot, he repeated. Abe frowned, trying to remember all the animatronic and holographic characters he'd worked on, but he didn't remember any Bobby Dots. Bobby Dots are life helpers. We're programmed to serve. Three curtsied uh, Abe deeply and gave him a wide, pink-lipped, aren't I adorable smile. Okay, uh, Abe said. Um, he checked the desk to see if it was stable. It worked just fine. He rotated back to... Uh, yeah, he rotated back toward the kitchen and headed toward the sitting room. As he went, three hopped from glass screen to glass screen, capering after Abe like an eager puppy. Um, her way of getting around is literally hopping, like jumping between screens. Yeah, okay. She's adorable. My job, three chattered as Abe went out, checking the light switches, is to manage the household. I'm in charge of cleaning, getting supplies like your groceries. I also monitor your health. My health. You know, your blood pressure, heart rate, blood sugar, all that stuff. Yeah, how? <laughs> how? <laughs> this is very futuristic. I'm loving it. Abe bounced on the bed as he laid down. He checked the lights and the alarm clock. They worked. Then he went to the bathroom. Three trailed after him. He's literally just ignoring her. It's so funny. I keep this room stocked too, she said. All your preferences are stored in my system, and I always make sure you have the best. He reached for a small glass bottle filled with something red. He peered at it and frowned. It was hot sauce? What is this doing here? He asked Three. Three flipped her pigtails and struck a new jaunty pose. Abe noticed that the bottom of Three's shoes glimmered as bright pink as her eyes. Yeah, see? Because the VR sister that I'm talking about does have these pigtails and does have these shoes. I am... I really want this to be... To be the, the Bobby Dots. I really do. The other one has like short red hair. And yellow. And still pink. So we'll see if we see another Bobby Dot. That looks like her. But at the moment that's kind of like a theory. Like I, I guess she has a similar appearance to the VR sister. But yeah. Uh, all supplies are delivered to the holding area for the apartment. And from there I program their distribution. I had this place here bef because it's the best mouthwash. What? Excuse me? Abe looked at Three, who continued to smile at him. Abe was definitely now beginning to see why the apartment was off limits. Abe held up the hot sauce and looked at Three. This isn't mouthwash. This is hot sauce. Three shrugged. Maybe. So? I love her. Yeah, same. Well, I guess it's something I can live with. To be honest, I expected something more serious, Abe said. Now this part is badass. This entire story is very cinematic, but this part especially. Okay. Uh, Abe headed toward the bathroom door. He did not see, but behind him, three mouths opened. Wait, wait, wait. I need to reread this because I, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> this part is badass. The story is very cinematic. Abe headed toward the bathroom door. He did not see, but behind him, three mouths opened. Her head split down the middle. Uh, the two sides fell away and the rest of her body flickered in and out of view. Sparks spit from an electrical socket near the counter. Pausing at the sound of the sparks, Abe looked around. He landed his gaze on three. She was fine. Oh, wait. <laughs> I read this as three mouths, but it's three's mouth. This is going to be very confusing because she's called three. Why is she called three? That's my question. Uh, is she Bobby Dot number three? Um, she's fine. She gave him a bright smile. Uh, to clarify what happened, she was glitching out when he wasn't looking. Ah, okay. Yeah. It transitions to the Peterplex. One of Abe's work responsibilities as a team leader was training new employees. His recruit today was a kid named Preston. Abe strode through the glittery and gleaming West Arcade, dodging excited kids. Abe stopped and waved his hands forward. It's so loud that they have to yell over the noise. What is that? Preston asked. 
That is DJ music. <laughs> oh my god. Most of the time, Ape told his new under underling Preston, DJ Music Man is in his booth. Abe pointed at DJ Music Man casually, as if the thing didn't bother him at all. It looks like a spider, Preston said, eyeing DJ Music Man. I don't like spiders. <laughs> yeah, I get you, but just remember, he's the creation. You're in charge. Abe was lying through his teeth. He felt no more in charge of DJ Music Man than he did of his brother, Rick, Vic, or his bosses. For some reason, this is the first and only time his brother Vic gets mentioned. That's weird. Maybe, maybe Vic will be more important in the next story, in, in Bobby Dots Part 2. DJ Music Man appeared to be unconcerned about Abe's or Preston's dislike. Oh yeah, he's sleeping like in game 2. Oh, nice. Great addition. Uh, he continued to snooze in his sound booth bef uh, while Abe and Preston studied him. DJ Music Man had a squarish head dominated full of teeth that looked like piano keys. Beyond the teeth, the inside of his mouth glowed pink and white. Huge round black eyes that reflected the room's lights were topped by blue brows and flanked a triangular shaped pink nose. The big cheeks on either side of the nose matched the brows. Okay. The body was attached to six metal piston-like legs that ended in cartoonish white gloved hands. It gets better. I'm sorry, but if you don't think Tails is in the games out of this story, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, that's a good point. A lot of people still don't think Tails games is true, but it it, it has to be after this story. When DJ Music Man is on the move, he hangs out in these tunnels. We've gestured at a wide co uh, corrugated metal tube swirling with bright neon lighting. The lighting on these things is notoriously unreliable. It always growing out or causing power surges that overload the circuits. One of your jobs will be checking and rechecking the generators in this section. It gets better. Remember that back hallway where the chasing is? The tunnels are convoluted, but you'll get the hang of them. This first one takes you to a back hallway. Apparently the man-sized tubes are for staff to crawl in. Abe and Preston crawled out of a tunnel and ended up in a cement-floored hallway. There it is, the hallway. For cool factoid, apparently one of the doors we can't reach in-game in that hallway is actually a staff bathroom. That's very cool. Um, can I... Preston asks. You don't need my permission to pee. Oh, go ahead, just be careful. Abe figured he might as well use the bathroom too. He followed Preston. Abe and Preston did their business and stepped up to side-by-side -side sinks. Uh, why did you tell me to be careful? Preston asked. Well, sometimes... Thump. Thump. <laughs> Abe's heart dropped. He tensed up. He grabbed Preston and pulled. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. This story is crazy. Just as one of DJ Music Man's big puffy gloved hands shot through the bathroom's open doorway. Preston screamed as Abe held him back from the giant glove to reach out. Guys, Security Breach is suddenly a really good game. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what is this? Um, just remember that Tales from the Peterplex was made, or was all written like, or it all started to be written I think before Security Breach. Oh, I uh, actually, I don't know if we can say that. Because I think Security Breach was being made at the same time. Okay, let's just say they were being made at the same time. But they still had to coordinate everything. And the canonicity of this story is insanely accurate. It's so good. It's telling events of things that happen. That It's like literally paralleling the events of Security Breach. This is amazing. We've seen so much in this story already, and we're not even we're not even a third the way through, apparently. Oh my gosh. It's taking a while to get through this, by the way. Like, what time is it? Have I been spending 15 minutes on this? There's no way. Right? I don't think I have, but that's just my estimate right now. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry this is taking so long. This is going to be like a three-hour video. Um... He does the thing too. Both of them have stared past the extending hand as the grinning face of DJ Music Man peered into the bathroom menacingly. This is amazing that the, the fact that they did this in Security Breach. Like, it's so accurate. That's... I can't believe this story. What do we do? Preston squeaked. We wait, Abe whispered calmly. The room is shaking. They stood stiffly, breathing rapidly. Why did he grab me? Preston whispered. Abe's whisper was even softer than Preston's. 
Rumour has it that DJ Music Man had an experimental bouncer mode. Supposedly that was removed, but the programmer missed a few lines of code. Yes, so... Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a login game. I remember that. I seem to recall. They waited as DJ Music Man's hand explored for a few minutes, then DJ Music Man retreated. Abe and Preston panted in unison. DJ Music Man finally disappeared around the corner. Does this job have hazards? hazard pay? Preston finally asked after a quiet moment. It transitions after that. Okay. A few, few more pages. Okay. Right. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. This, this is crazy. This is so bad. This is so mad. Okay. When he moved into the pizza plex, Abe had given his belongings in every nook and cranny throughout the huge complex. It would take time to get them all and relocate them into his new apartment. That's a big, big point right there because we do see a lot of belongings from inside the pizza plex and we assumed that they were all Gregory's. But... Maybe this is telling us otherwise. He planned on relocating the previous night, but it had been late. He needed sleep. Okay, cool. He wouldn't be have been surprised if Preston just quit tomorrow. Abe, could, Abe thought he hadn't done a good job. Okay, Abe took a step toward the kitchen. The nearest glass panel lit up. Three was eating a holographic sandwich. Her words came out garbled as if eating an actual sandwich. She's not alone this time. The glass panel came alive with more colour and movement. Abe then realised he was looking at two more bobby dots. This is where their characters become so, so memorable to me. Okay, cool. For heaven's sake, the green bobby dot spoke. She sounded younger, but it wasn't cutesy. More like a spoiled brat. For heaven's sake, you know you can't eat. You're a holograph, you twit. Can too, three said. See, I'm eating. But you're... The green bobby dot sighed dramatically. Ah, never mind. Um, the blue bobby dot shoved three aside. Hi, Abe. Sorry we didn't get to meet you yesterday. Three blocked us out. Oh, there's something sus going on about three. What's, what's three got up her sleeves? <laughs> the blue one sounded like a teenager, but this one was even higher pitched, as if her words were spoken in a musical quality. I just wanted to be sure he had everything he needed, three said. You just wanted to have him all to yourself, the green bobby dot said. She faced Abe. The girls are fighting. Hi, Abe. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm two. Like Miss Glutton here, my job is to help you out. Imagine. Imagine there are seven bobby dots and each of them lined up with the deadly sins. That would be a very cool addition to the story. Like three, two had long pe pe uh, pigtails. Twos were bright neon green. She looked like three, but her features were green, and she wore a pair of round grey glasses. A little taller than three, two was sleeker too. Ugh, you're not nearly as helpful as I am, three said. Two ignored three's comment. She adjusted her glasses and continued. I'm in charge of news and information. I'll keep you connected to the outside world. I'll answer any questions you might have. I'll also handle any notes you might have, like tasks or shopping lists, and I'll do your scheduling. Show off, three spoke, sh uh, swallowing the last piece of her sa sandwich. The blue bobby dot flashed brighter. Hi, I'm one. I'm all about entertainment and media. That includes social media. I'll get you music and movies and dates. Yum, I like dates. They're so good with cookies. One rolled her holographic eyes. Her pigtails were bright blue and her ears were covered in a set of headphones featuring upright antennae that ended in blue circles. It's nice to meet you two. Uh, better late than never. One poked three in her round belly. Uh, okay, so basically three, the bobby dots we first met. She got an overall round build, long red pigtails and a grey bodysuit. She's a lifestyle bobby dot. Two is the nerdy bobby dot. Uh, handles information and news. Uh, still has long pigtails, but is green. One, entertainment and media bobby dot. And she's blue and wears big headphones with long pigtails. Uh, he's cute, isn't he? Didn't tell you? Didn't I tell you he was cute? One, who Abe noticed was as slender as two, both gave Abe a flirty grin. Those freckles are to die for. I wish I had freckles. I don't like my freckles, Abe said. For some reason, he felt comfortable with them. Maybe because they were holograms and not real girls. Because he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
Uh, who said you had to look like everyone else? I'd call you moderately handsome. What do you think, one? They begin complimenting him and his reaction. Uh, thanks. Would you like something to eat? You're always hungry. Yeah, and you're always a show-off. I'm just going to end there for tonight. Okay. Okay. Can't believe I have to clarify this, but one is being described as having a teen voice was simply just a description of how she sounded. It's common wording. It doesn't mean teenage. One is literally only called teen for a voice, but it sounded punkish and high-pitched. She is second most feminine and mature looking Bobby Dot next to three. Christ. If there has been this much negativity in attempts to literally devalue a book for existing... Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for this, guys. I've been in a surprise. We're doing it earlier today so we can get more pages in. Okay. Well. That was... <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, oh, wow. That is very good art. I love that art. And I love how we've got two and three. And kind of one, but... Well, I guess there's one here. Anyway. Oh, there's one here. Yeah, I love this. This is very cool. Um, that is the end for now. But uh, we're going to cut straight to when I am able to continue when Enton finishes the live reading. So I'll see you then. Goodbye. Okay, welcome back. That was obviously a very short inter uh, interval for you. But it has been 24 hours for me. Uh, and really, I suggest if you are reading through, or if you're listening through this entire thing, uh, I would suggest at least taking a break <laughs> at this point. Uh, because, you know, we've, we've been through an hour and we're only a third through, apparently. So, um... It's, it, this is really good so far. I'm, I'm enjoying, I am so excited to see what the rest of the story has in store for us. But oh my god, okay, let me just chew on something. Alright, so here we are. The fridge is fully restocked, Three said. It's all the stuff the last guy ordered. Yeah, I'm wondering who lived here before and how, uh, how, the, the reason why the, the room was out of service, essentially. Uh, okay, I'll be moving stuff in, so I'll be back later. We'll be waiting, when, she, when said as she pointed her blue glowing fingertips at the glass panel between the sitting area and the kitchen. That's our terminal. You can input your requests there, or you can talk to us. Think of us as the heart and soul of your apartment. We'll provide synchronization and assistance in all aspects of your daily life. I feel like the fact that they are the heart and soul of the apartment is probably foreshadowing that they are, they are trapped in there or something. I don't know. Um... That includes food. An hour later, an hour later, Abe carried in three more boxes and stored his belongings in the various drawers and closets in the apartment. The, bo the Bobby Dots were helping, in inverted commas. I think socks should go in the second drawer. Top drawers should be reserved for papers and jewellery and the like. Says who? Two flipped her pigtails over her shoulder haughtily. I have access to multiple resources on optimal organisation and they all agree that socks are kept in second drawers. Yeah, well... You just find things that support your own ideas. A put his hands up. Ladies, please! Three giggled. Did you hear that? He called us ladies! Oh, what a gentleman, one said sarcastically. Quite gallant, two said. And still cute, three said. Abe shook his head, but put his sock in the second drawer. He's tired of these hoes. <laughs> the closet already has a lot of clothes. I think most of them will fit you. Abe raised an eyebrow. Landon's clothes were still here? Abe pushed the closet door aside to reveal that it was still half full of men's clothing. Nice clothing too. He had a nice taste, didn't he? Not the latest in fashion, according to my research, but pleasing in a retro sort of way. Landon wore old retro clothing, fits with a plex environment. Yeah. Try them on, Three squeaked. For once, I agree with her, one said. Try them on. I think they'll please your potential dates. It will be only men. Oh, <laughs> I get it because of the gay joke. Funny. Uh, a pulled off his shirt. He blanched when he turned and saw all three Bobby Dots watching him. Uh, a little privacy, ladies. I'm not responsible for what happens next. <laughs> Sorry. Party pooper, she giggled. Oh, shut up. All three Bobby Dots winked and disappeared off screen. Three is really into Abe. <laughs> He's putting on the retro clothing and he actually likes it. It fits him. Um, oh, be still, my heart, Three said. Quite flattering. 
Two said. You look ready for a night out dancing, one said. Yeah, thanks. I'm hungry, Abe said. Goody, food, three winked out of you. Where does she go? Abe asked the other two Bobby Dots. She's in the kitchen, one said. She's worse than Pavlov's dog, two said. Be careful when you go in there. You might slip on her drool. It time skips to dinner time, and this visual is amazing. All the Bobby Dots are surrounding the panels on the dinner table, pretending to sit there with fake food just to play along. Of course, three has more food than the others. It's just for show. We want you to have the family dining experience. Three is mass-consuming holographic food. It appears you are deficient in vitamin K, selenium, iron, and potassium. Because his diet for the past few months has only been pizza. Yes. Good call. Abe is getting annoyed with how three keeps going on and on and on. I don't know what you've been eating, but you're clearly not getting enough fiber or proteins. Brussels sprouts take up 37% of the regular vitamin K intake. And, okay, how about we skip all the details, Abe interrupted. Three jutted out her lower lip and turned her back to Abe. Abe looked at her round shoulders. They were shaking. Abe st stared. Are you crying? Three didn't answer. Abe looked at one and two. I I is she crying? No one likes their hard work to go unappreciated, two said. No one wants to t be taken for granted, one said. Abe felt ridiculously bad. Three, I'm sorry, I appreciate you. Three turned around and affected a dramatic sniff. Her, pig, her pink pigtails jostled around her head. Abe stared at Three's back. She was a hologram, but she was acting like a real girl. He wasn't great with girls, and he wasn't sure how to treat these holographic ones. <laughs> okay, that one actually was funny. Um, I, I, I'm very suspicious of these Bobby Dots. I, I, obviously, like, the whole theme of the story is it, it's all revolving around these mysterious bobby dots but I, I i am very centered on like what's going on with these girls what actually are they because i have a feeling that these girls are like different to the regular bobby dots in the um in the other apartments and there's a reason for that and uh it's because of like an accident that happened or something hey i have an idea do you all like uh being called by numbers i think you're far too special to be named one two and three how about I call you by real names? Three dramatically turned around, her eyes glistening and her grin widening, her pigtails twirled. Really? Real names? Sure, Abe said. I could call you Rose. What do you think? Rose? Three gasped as if the name, as if the name was that of a revered goddess. She beamed. My name is Rose. What about me? One asked. I want a pretty name too. What about Gemini? Like the constellation? I always think of a blue colour when I think of stars. Gemini. I like that. She turned to her fellow Bobby Dots. Did you hear that? I'm a star! Three says, um, I'm a flower. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Wait, this, is, this comedy is priceless. It's so good. What am I? Two asked. I like the name Olive, Abe said. And I love green olives. One is now Gemini, two is now Olive, three is now Rose. Okay, good to know. Abe smiled. Okay, Gemini, Olive, and Rose. Now that you have proper names, let me officially say that I appreciate you. Abe began plowing through the, metal, the meal. Sorry. Good boy, Olive said. If you try to pat my head, I'll shut you off. Realistic reaction. You can't shut us off, Gemini's blue-tipped antennae vibrated as she spoke. Wait, really? Abe, Abe asked. Gemini didn't answer. Neither did the other two Bobby Dots. They all just smiled at him. Abe finished his food and pushed his empty plate away. He pointed at his empty plate. So, this was one of Landon's favourites? Landon liked to study languages, and he wanted to eat the food that went along with the cultures he was studying. What happened to Landon? Abe asked. Did he move out? I think it would be fun to live in Morocco. <laughs> Olive said. Such a colourful place. I love colour. Oh no! Oh, I love this! I love this story so far! It's so good! It's getting amazing! This is everything I wanted! Anime girls, no. <laughs> is that where Landon went? Abe asked. Our knowledge of our tenant doesn't extend beyond the network, Gemini said. But didn't he tell you where he was going when he left? Abe asked. Weren't you as friendly with him as you are with me? We love getting to know our tenants. Gemini said. 
they're not responsive to those specific questions. The, boy, the Bobby Dots were avoiding Abe's questions, should he push them? He decided to try one more time. I'm so happy the clothes fit you, Rose said. They were definitely avoiding his questions. Abe looked at the Bobby Dots' sweet, bright faces. Their evasiveness was a little unsettling. Maybe it was to keep privacy for the tenants. It is then, or it then is filler for the rest of it, no dialogue, but it eventually ends up to him writing an email to his mother and going to sleep. Uh, he is awoken from this slumber. Uh, they're eating breakfast and Rose has pretended to eat donuts that don't exist. There's a little powder around her lips. Abe plays along and teases her that she shouldn't eat any more donuts. He's getting ready for work, but right before he leaves, Rose asks him if he wants anything to eat before he leaves. But wait a minute, what is that? No thank you. His gaze drifted up toward the ceiling. Uh, what is that? He pointed up. The Bobby Dots continued smiling at him. Bobby Dots, what is that? Bobby Dots, what am I looking at? Are you sure you don't need something to eat? Rose twirl twirled her pigtails. Maybe some music or entertainment? Gemini tapped her headphones. They were ignoring him again. Bobby Dots, what is that on the ceiling? The ceiling, between the dining area and the sitting area, had a trap door, about two feet square. The door wasn't large, but big enough for a human to fit through. The Bobby Dot's screens begin flashing and glitching when he tries to head out. Their green, blue and pink colours seem to flash so quickly, light streaked across the glass screens throughout the apartment. As quickly as it began, it stopped, and Olive quickly reappeared on the screen closest to him, her chin placed on top of her hands. You're going to be late for work if you don't leave now. Gemini popped up near a screen closer to the door, as if she was trying to lead him away from the kitchen. Don't worry about it. The door is just for maintenance. It's locked. Tenants aren't provided access. Abe nodded and headed back to the apartment door, trying to brush away what just happened. Just as he did, there was a crack of darkness at the edge of the trap door. <gasps> the door wasn't fully closed. Something's up there. Oh my god, okay, okay, this, wow. <laughs> Abe wor uh, whistled as he entered the Pizza Plex's Fazza Blast Arena. Although Abe could have given this job to one of his team members, he liked working in the arena. Repairs were pretty easy, so he could play a little laser tag before he went home. The Fazza Blast Arena was loud and garishly bright. High-pitched sounds of the Fazza Blasters were going off constantly. The zaps went over the frantic notes of the Fazza Blast jam that played on the overhead speakers. And yes, as N. Tom is saying right now, that is that is the OST name. That's amazing. That's brilliant. It Like, everything is pointing to this being a security breach. You cannot deny uh, Tails games at this point. Or at least Bobby games. <laughs> Bobby games. Um, Abe looked at the geometric patterns that flashed on the walls that players used for cover. Abe thought the designs looked like modern hieroglyphs. He often wondered if they'd actually meant something, like a secret code lit up on the walls of the arena. No way. No way that's a reference to the sister location room. <laughs> it probably isn't, but I'm thinking too hard about it, I think. A couple of preteen boys ran past Abe as the beams of their phaser blasters extended in front of them. An alien bot rolled toward them menacingly. Capture the flag. He thought the aliens looked like a bees. <laughs> they do, actually. <laughs> They actually do uh, in the game. According to one of the work orders Abe had received, one of the alien bots was glitching. Instead of saying, resistance is futile, as its programming intended, it would instead spout, resistance is pizza, constantly. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. Abe found the, gl uh, the glitching alien bot guarding the last flag players had to capture before reaching the winner's elevator. What is this game? Nay, I mean, what is this story? Oh my god, the winner's elevator took players to the Superstar Lounge where they won a personal Fazza Blaster. This is literally retelling Security Breach. What the hell? Um, after deactivating the robot and pr reprogramming its script, he retraced his steps to the staging area. Joining the orange team, he donned his helmet and picked up a blaster. Now he could have a little fun. Um... He's now playing Fuzzle Blast. He trotted toward the arena and headed for the first flag. He played this game enough and he was pretty good at it, but the alien bots were programmed to vary their routines and every game was different. Capture the flag. 
Abe dove to get away from being shot. Um, Bro just took it too seriously. He fell down the stairs to a lower level and hurt his ankle. Unfortunately, his rubber sole gave in and he fell on a ramp leading to the lower section of the arena. His ankle twist. A scruffy, hairy boy, not more than 10 years old, rushed over to Abe. Are you okay, sir? Abe already felt like an idiot. Sir? Now he felt old too. Hey, you better watch out. Abe pointed behind the boy's shoulder as an alien bot rolled up to them. The boy whirled and fired off a shot. Then he scampered down the ramp and disappeared. He watched the bot pursue the boy. He tested his twisted ankle. Pain shot up his leg, but the ankle held. Abe defeatingly limped out of the arena. It looked like he'd been doing paperwork for the rest of the day. The Bobby Dots made a big deal of Abe's swollen ankle. Olive described in great detail the me mechanism of a twisted ankle and the appropriate treatment for it. He was so relaxed that he went right to sleep. A couple hours later though, he was wide awake. He sat up in his bed. What had awakened him so abruptly? He looked around. He couldn't see anything but the dark outlines of the room's furniture. Nothing was out of place. Nothing was moving. So why were there hairs on Abe's arms? Why, sorry. Why were the hairs on Abe's arms standing on end? I love that writing right there. His instincts are telling him that someone might have broken into the house. He listened intently. At first he heard the sound of distant traffic, then he heard something closer. It was a very soft sound, like material brushing against something. Abe held his breath and concentrated. The sound shifted in tone. Instead of a gentle rustle, it became a quiet rasp. The image of a snake slithering across the carpet suddenly popped into Abe's head. Okay. I don't know if I can do this story. <laughs> There's a lot of themes here that I am not liking. As I mean, I'm enjoying. Like I'm, I'm really enjoying. But snakes, dementia. <laughs> There's so much here that's like, oh my gosh. Okay, and the Bobby dots and the trap door. Oh my gosh, he really didn't like that. Bobby dots, lights on, please. Rose immediately materialised on the glass panel near Abe's bed. His bedside lamp came on. Abe looked around the room. Everything looked normal. The rest of the apartment was dark. Did you want a midnight snack? Rose asked. Abe shook his head. I thought I heard something. Sometimes I hear the food calling out to me, Rose said. Um, Olive materialised Olive materialized next to Rose. Did you have a nightmare? My studies show that sensory experiences from nightmares can delude a person into thinking the nightmare has turned into reality. Is the apartment secure? Abe asked the Bobby Dots. Everything is totally cool. Rose twisted her pigtails. Abe listened. The sound was gone. Before he reached the bathroom, Olive turned its lights on low. Thanks, Abe said. He went into the bathroom and shut the door. Abe stepped over to the toilet. He started to do his thing, but suddenly he felt a prickle at the back of his neck. He was being watched. He was sure of it. Abe looked around. The glass screens that filled the bathroom were dark. He remembered he had instructed them to strictly give him privacy in the bathroom. But why did he feel that sensation? <laughs> he quickly flushed the toilet and left the bathroom. As he figured they would be, the Bobby Dots were waiting for him in the bedroom. He still cannot shake the feeling something is watching him. Uh, do you record my movements? Abe asked the Bobby Dots. Your movement is vaguely tracked in the event that you need us. Olive answered, adjusting her glasses. But no record is made of your activities. So you're not watching me? We don't observe you. We simply respond to you. Do you guys do cleaning at night or whatever? Maybe the Bobby Dots have been doing something that made the sound Abe had heard. We're dormant at night unless we're summoned, Olive said. Are you sure you don't want a snack? Rose asked. Abe shook his head. He got back in bed. Go ahead and turn the light out, Rose, he said. Rose sighed, but she turned out the light. All three Bobby Dots said, good night, and they vanished. He was unsettled, but tired. Tired enough to not hear the sound of the trap door closing. Five Nights at Freddy's. Tales from the Pizza Plex. Yep, out, down yourself. Okay, I know I'm pausing a lot and I'm so sorry about that because that means this video is literally going to be hours long. This story is insane. Tales from the Pizzaplex is insane. I have, I've read every single story up to now. 
in the Phasma Frights and Tales from the Pizzaplex books, and in none of them. Well, okay, that that might be giving them a little bit, like not not a lot of credit, but um, in none of them, I felt the same way about this just this weird dread at the back of my head. It's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Abe Abe isn't aware of like, well, he is a little bit, but like. The, it's like the the kind of irony that the audience knows what's happening, but the character doesn't. And you really want to root for Abe. You really want to be like, Abe, just see it and get out of the freaking apartment. You know, you may be homeless, but sometimes, um, you know, you, you can't take things like that. I don't know what I was going with there, but like, you know, the lesson the lesson learn, learned here is like, I guess don't break into an apartment that you're not allowed to be in. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, you really want to root for him and he's just not seeing the thing. And oh my gosh, this line, it's just, it's perfect. I have never felt these kind of shivers before in another FNAF story, I don't think. I, I've obviously felt goosebumps before, like many times. But uh, this one is special and it's really telling that this one is special with the fact that I've had a break in between and I'm still just totally into this story. It's amazing. I'm captivated. Okay. The next night it happened again. Abe woke up again abruptly. Um, he looked at the clock. It was almost 1 a.m. about the same time he had woken up the night before. <laughs> Imagine if it said 1.35 a.m. He heard the sound of something being dragged across his carpet. Something was slithering out there. Abe got out of bed. Tonight, Abe didn't ask for lights. He wasn't sure why, but he felt like he needed to investigate the sound on his own. He's sneaking out into a pitch dark room. He cannot see much inside, but he can hear everything. He is in the same room as the thing causing the noise. Abe tiptoed toward his bedroom door. Pausing there, he listened. The sound was a little further away, but it was still there. Abe peeked out into the sitting area. Although the lights were out, the moon was full, and the neon glare from the adjacent pizzaplex provided enough light for Abe to see his surroundings. Badass visual. It is. That's so, like, the world building in this is great. He looked around for movement, but he didn't see any. He could still hear the sound, and the sound definitely indicated movement. Something was in motion, but what? Suddenly the sound changed. It was right in front of him. Abe stopped. The thing causing the sound was crawling up the wall. It became a muffled scrape. Too close! Lights! The lights came on. Abe was alone except for the bobby dots, who now surrounded him on, a near, on nearby glass panels. What is it? Olive gl glowing greens asked. Is it snack time? Rose asked. Aw, oh, Rose. <laughs> he looked around and remembered the sound. Something was going up the wall. Abe looked up. The trap door he'd noticed earlier was right above him. Had whatever he'd heard gone through that door? I am getting big help wanted vibes from this. I know it's probably not like illusion tech and stuff, but... I'm just saying that there are trapdoors here, there are snakes or something, you know, I, I, I get those kind of vibes, I just wanted to say that. It was probably obvious, but... Um, yeah, Abe shifted to look at the door more closely. I think we need a snack, Rose said. Okay, fine, I'll have a snack, but tell me what the door is for. He grabbed an oatmeal cookie from the fridge and sat down at the kitchen island. Rose joined him. She had a dozen cookies on a plate in front of her. So spill, Abe said. You obviously know something about that. He pointed at the trapdoor. We are second generation Bobby Dots. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. That means, you know what that means? In the description for the Bobby Dots conclusion, it says that Abe is looking for the first generation Bobby Dots. This is coming together. Oh my god. Gen 2's is for short, Rose said, around a mouthful of cookie. That's right, we are known as Gen 2's. The Gen 1's preceded us. The door is for the Gen 1's. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I'm going crazy. Olive spoke up. The Gen 1's were the first generation of apartment helpers in this building. Unlike us, they were actual physical robots. Oh, and then something went wrong, right? Abe's cookie got stuck in his throat, l l l like animatronics. Although they could move around the apartment more freely than we can because they weren't confined to screens, they were limited by their cables. Cables? They're plugged into a grid up in the crawl space above the ceiling. 
This is amazing. Oh, they have to remain tethered to be functional. Poor things. I can't even imagine it would. What well, I can't even imagine it would be like being tied up. They have sympathy for them. Oh, okay. Abe studied the trapdoor, and they're still up there. Rose nodded enthusiastically. Yeah, these things are just up there, tied and sitting up in the ceiling, still alive and aware. Wow, this story has taken a turn. They're not tasked with apartment care anymore, Olive said. That privilege lies with us now. They're out of date, and unfortunately, they've been damaged. It's very sad, Gemini said. They're so limited, but they still try. What do you mean they try? Abe asked. Rose spoke. Oh, they still try to fulfill their commands. Sometimes, they come out of the crawl space and attempt to help out. What do you mean they help out? Abe asked. Are you okay? Rose asked. Your blood pressure has gone up. I'm fine, Abe said. He was lying. He wasn't fine at all. He was not fine at all. There were robots in the ceiling, and they came to help out? Why haven't they been removed? Abe asked. I mean, if they're out of date and damaged, why are they still up there? Rose's response haunts me because of how simple it is. Oh, they just want to help out. <laughs> that reminds me of a uh, friendly face, right right at the end of friendly face when, um, you know, what is it, Edward? Uh, no, Edward was the, uh, the one that lived. Jack, the Jack, the Jack, um, yeah, the Jack dog or whatever, or Jack cat. I can't even remember if it was a cat, it was a cat. The Jack cat. Uh, animatronic, the friendly face animatronic, uh, which just like it just wanted to play. <laughs> uh, it was therefore that they got hit by um, by trucks or whatever. Um, what did, what do you mean by this? We feel bad for them, so we let them do what they can, even if it usually creates more work for us. Oh, so these these bobby dots are probably innocent, I would say, unless they like replace them and there's like a war going on and we don't know. <laughs> probably not. Uh, even the bobby dots have emotions, you know, Rose said. All three bobby dots gave Abe a long look. He nodded several times. Of course you do. Transition cut to the next morning. Um, okay, cool. Uh, the skull you see in the cover of Generation 1 is more specifically you can already piece it together. That one in particular is Gemini. You can see the headphones. Let me see. Oh! Oh no. <laughs> oh no, and that's probably why she's called Jerem uh, Jeremy, Ger Gemini, because Gemini means like twin, right? Am I right in saying that? I know Gemini as like the uh, hol hol hologram, not hologram. I I don't have any words today. I know like in astrology, Gemini, the symbol has like two, like it's like a twin, right? So that would make sense because uh, the gen we'll see the Gen One and the Gen Two, so that's why they named it Gemini, I assume. I don't know. Um, it's a bit weird to like say you're called Gemini because stars are blue. Like that's a bit weird. Uh, strip of the life, can't walk. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Very nice. I, I like the recap. Oh, that's really cool art. Nice one. Okay. Ah. Oh. <laughs> So, Abe almost got his hand cut off by the garbage disposal in the sink because it turned on out of nowhere. Hey! He yelled. Rose, Abe said. Why did you turn the garbage disposal on? Rose looked up. Did I? Her eyes looked even bigger than normal. It came on, Abe snapped, while my hand was in it. Rose's lips quivered. You're mad at me? I'm not mad. You seem upset. What about some soothing music? Gemini said. <laughs> Gemini, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Uh, it's obviously like the, the gen, the gen one's messing with, with him, right? Something with a lot of violin noises played over the speaker. Uh, Abe wanted to plug his ears. No music! Gemini's mouth fitted into a pout. You're getting on his nerves, Olive said to Gemini. Not everyone likes romantic stuff as you do, as much as you do. Olive flitted uh, across the glass screen to get close to Abe. Her green glow made Abe blink. I think what you need is a nice warm soak. Abe thought about the hot tub on the top floor, if only. Your tub is jetted, Rose said as if she'd read his mind. Wow. 48 pages left. That's, oh my god, that's so much. Uh, Abe walked toward the bathroom. The bobby dots followed, hoping from screen, hopping from screen to screen. 
They clustered on the screen next to the bathroom door. Privacy, please. Um, oh no, this means dinner will be later than usual, isn't it? A few minutes later, Abe was soaked up to his shoulders. Abe brought a paperback mystery novel with him. He stretched out and let his muscles relieve the tension as he lost himself in the fictional detective's investigation. Abe was so caught up in Who Done It that he didn't realize the tub was getting hotter until sweat trickled off his nose. Abe called out, Hey Rose, can you turn the temperature down please? Bro Rose popped in. Oh good, are you getting out soon? The food is getting... I'll be out a little longer. I just need the temperature lowered. Rose sniffed, nodded, then disappeared. Abe settled back, then he squirmed. It appeared to have gone hotter. I said down, not up! It immediately got even hotter. As soon as he got out of the water, he barely made it. The water began to boil. What? That's amazing. His ankle is swelling because of how hot the water was. Beyond Abe, the tub's jets roiled violently. The water's agitation was far beyond that the jet could create. The water in the tub was creating a full roiling boil. He went to the shower enclosure and turned on the water just to make sure it was cold. He jumped under the frigid spray and shocked in recoil at the shock of the cold. Rose! He bellowed. Rose appeared on the shower's glass enclosure. <laughs> What's the matter? Wait, why are you in the shower? Because the water was boiling. He hissed and covered himself with a towel. Olive popped in suddenly. It, is, it appears you have a superficial uh, dermal burn. A supplement of aloe or an antibiotic ointment is r recommended. Try not to stay under the cold water too long. It could cause shock. He is now putting aloe vera all, all over his body. The tub is so loud and it's steaming. Turn the tub off, he yelled at Rose. Immediately the jet stopped and the tub started to drain. Rose appeared on the screen closest to him, sniffling and rubbing her pink eyes. You don't have to yell at me. Oh. <laughs> this is breaking my heart. This is actually breaking my heart. Oh, I feel bad for every character in this. <laughs> Even the freaking anime girls. Even the anime girls. Um, so, prediction. Uh, or just kind of prediction of what's going on. Obviously, the Gen 1 animatronics are trying to kill him. And I love that this is like classic horror, like short story kind of form where it's repetitive. It, it shows multiple ways on them trying to kill him. It shows the arm in the garbage dis disposal. It shows the the boiling water, etc, uh, etc. Et uh, and it kind of reminds me of like Fetch where, yes, there was a part where like Fetch brought a lucky finger but that wasn't the full story, you know, it, it was repetitive. He also brought like a, a toy spider or whatever it was. Uh, and then eventually he brought Kimberly. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, uh, I really like the repetitiveness in stories because it, it gives a better sense of what might be happening and how things are connected. So I like that aspect of it. And this story is just doing every element I want so well. And I don't know how this writing is so good because it's just exceptional, honestly. Uh, phenomenal. Um, I I need fudge. She disappeared. Oh, she stretched. Oh my god. I I can't. I can't with the story. I can't. Like these characters are so adorable. They are they are written so well. You get a good sense of who each character is, and what their their job is, and you get a good sense of emotions and stuff and it's it's oh i hate this i'm actually gonna cry <laughs> it wasn't rose's fault the water was boiling right he immediately felt like a jerk i'm sorry he called out oh don't worry about her she's so sensitive gemini said he put a robe on and now he's in the back bedroom feeling guilty rose i'm sorry i yelled <laughs> rose popped into you uh, interview she was eating chocolate fudge it's okay, she said thickly. No, it's not. I was in pain and I took it out on you. I appreciate everything you do. I'm sorry. I understand. Can you tell me why the water boiled? Abe asked. It wasn't me. It was the Gen 1s. But I didn't see a Gen 1, Abe protested. He had his eyes wide open in the tub. He would have noticed if a robot came in. Olive popped in. The Gen 1's cables occasionally get tangled with the power systems and plumbing lines in the apartment. They get stuck, 
and their programming causes the apartment systems to malfunction. What can be done about it? Abe asked. All three Bobby Dots shrugged. Abe sighed. He then thought about the idea of going up into the crawl space to handle the Gen 1s. He immediately shivered. Nope. Nope. The idea of facing damaged robots in a small dark space wasn't at all appealing to him. He had to do something about it. But how? I think what we need is a system update, Abe said. We aren't programmed for system updates. What if I manually initiate a system update? Abe suggested. All three Bobby Dots shook their head. There aren't any updates available. Here's some character development, Rose is a genius. Then what can I do? Rose polished off her fudge. She looked at Gemini and Olive. How about we set up monitoring protocols to keep an eye on what the Gen 1s are doing? Olive nodded. We can do that. And you need to tell us in advance what you're doing, so we can make sure everything's functioning properly. Hmm. Sure, Abe said. Yay, Rose said. Can we start cooking now? Not right now, please. I need to think. Rose frowned, and the Bobby Dot disappeared. He was more than freaked out. What if he had fallen asleep and been boiled alive? <laughs> uh, Abe looked around the room. Even the greener grass has weaved weeds. Oh my gosh, yes, he said. His mum was right. He had to admit, the apartment he had thought was a sanctuary was no longer safe. Transition cut to the workday, the last Pizzaplex segment of this story. Oh, <laughs> Daycare! No way, there's... Ah! Daycare! Oh! <laughs> Ah! Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, it feels like there's like a million mini stories in this one big story. And it's not even like a full, st like there's a part two. <laughs> there's a part two. We might even see more of the pizza plex in part two. Oh my gosh. I'm so hyped. Um, okay. Abe was watching Preston how to fix a generator in the pizza plex daycare. It's literally security breach again. Unfortunately, he was distracted that Preston had been learning all the wrong ways to fix the generator. Why are the generators in the play structures? Preston asked. The power keeps flashing on and off because they're trying to fix this generator. Abe couldn't answer the question because when he kneeled up from the generator, they were beginning to be shrouded in darkness. Only their flashlights illuminated the space. I mean, it just seems like an odd place to put the generators, don't you think? Where all the kids are playing? Preston said. Me too, Preston. <laughs> Abe shrugged. He gestured at the chaotic, colourful play area around them. Does any of this make sense? Frequently filled with screaming kids, the daycare was filled with tunnels, bridges, tubes, bull pits, and so many other sorts of contraptions that the kids could explore. That wasn't what he thought was strange, though. What Abe thought was strange was the entire daycare was overseen by an animatronic attendant with a dual personality. It was sort of a not kid-friendly Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In its happy incarnation, the daycare attendant was the sun. Sun had a somewhat deformed grinning face surrounded by a, a retractable triangles that clearly mimicked the rays of the sun. He wore massive orange and yellow striped pants and was clown-like in his appearance and demeanor. But the attendant had a dark side, a dark side called the moon. If the lights went out in the daycare, the sun would morph into a leering moon-faced clown wearing dark blue billowy pants dotted with yellow stars. The moon would stalk children around the daycare, admonishing the children. You've been very naughty. Hey, you all wanted lore, right? Here's the backstory of the daycare's creation and the entire lore to the daycare attendant. What? What? Shortly after the daycare was created, the designers realised a flaw. The lights kept shorting out. It wasn't dangerous or anything, not a fire hazard, just a darkness issue. The cheapest solution was to install backup generators. Ah, I see. We are actually getting generator lore. <laughs> By then, all installations were in place and the climbing structures were the only place to conceal the generators. That doesn't sound very safe, Preston said. Neither does an animatronic attendant with a split personality. What's up with that? The sun was an old stage animatronic. Part of its theatrical shtick would, was that he would turn evil when its light went out. I, I assumed that was it anyway. Um, the theatre used to be this. That used to be the theatre. He would play shows there. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. 
Uh, Moon was a character that was made to intentionally be an evil side to the sun. He's always been uh, evil, but it was all for a play. Eventually, the sun was reprogrammed into the daycare attendant. The tragedy masks were a hint. Oh, that's so cool, the tragedy masks. I love that. That's great. Um, the performance functions were taken out, but the darkness trigger couldn't be removed. That, combined with the occasional blackouts in the daycare, created the moon side of the attendant. The moon was never intended to happen. It's a glitch. It resulted in several undesirable behaviours. Apparently they had meetings about what to do, and they concluded fixing sun was more trouble than it's worth. It's cheaper just to make the light stay on. There you go, that's its entire history and why the generators exist. That's amazing. That's so good. Who, who'd have ever thought we would have gotten that in these short stories? Like, these are just incredible. Um, right as Abe spoke, the moon's glowing eyes cut through the darkness. Moon peered into the play structure. You've been a naughty, naughty boy. Naughty, naughty boy. <laughs> nice. Okay. This segment is really short and not much else happens, but it's cool nonetheless. Funny thing, Moon calling Abe a naughty boy sends him into an ex existential crisis. Abe stared at the moon. Yeah, you don't know half of it, Abe thought. He'd definitely been naughty when he inserted himself into the apartment that was off limits, and now he'd been paying the price. When Abe had first checked out the apartment and found the hot sauce, he figured he could handle any problems in the apartment had. Oh, that's why the hot sauce was there. That's why the hot sauce was there, because the Bob, the original uh, Bobby Dots ordered it. Actually, maybe I might be wrong about that. Um, when he found out the sounds he heard at night were caused by malfunctioning uh, robots, he was spooked. But he'd figured he could handle that situation too. After all, his job dealt with repairing malfunctioning animatronics. When his fingers almost got, got cut off by the garbage disposal, he'd been rattled. But he decided, no harm, no foul. But when the boiling water began to sting his skin, even after the aloe was verbed, he could no longer delude himself. He realised in this moment he was in danger. He'd always been in danger. Serious danger. But what could he do? Any reasonable, pers any reasonable person would move out of the apartment. He knew that having a cu cushy place to live wasn't worth the risk of injury or even death. If Abe moved out of the apartment, where would he go? Would he throw everything away? No, he really didn't have another option. However dangerous it might be, he had to stay there for now. All he could do is survive. Just like he'd been doing all his life. Wow, that's a great line. So, like, that's a very small line, but very, very, like deep you know Preston's screaming voice brought him back out of his thoughts and he realized Moon had gotten significantly closer Preston looked at the moon warily how do I reroute the wiring Abe is now taking control of the situation quickly at the knowledge Moon is going to do bad things if he doesn't hurry Abe leaned in and showed Preston an electrical trick he would taught himself when he first took the pizza plex job it's a bypass in the ground wiring see with a few bits and bobs and a slap on the top and a kss, kss, and a boing boing boing, it was fixed. <laughs> Preston followed the instructions. It worked. The generator just kicked in. Then lights came on. The moon stopped and retreated. He became the sun again. Preston was significantly relieved at this. Hey, that's pretty cool, he told Abe. In spite of his dark thoughts, Abe smiled. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Abe might have been naughty, but he was capable. As the lights came on... Abe's dark mood brightened. Uh, symbolism. Something cool I noticed was it was probably a reference to the duality of his parents and how his life had been taught. He has a dark side and a light side that he utilises, his mum and dad. Good point. Good point. Anywho, that aside, Bobby Dot's transition. Uh, oops. Uh, Abe had made the rest... Uh, sorry, Abe had made the rest of the week without incident and he was more than relieved when Saturday rolled around. It was rainy, perhaps a good day to make some tea and read a novel. Okay, so this is interesting. The story seems to be going into the sentience of Fazbear Entertainment's AI. After grabbing his novel, he wandered into the kitchen. The Bobby Dots, chatty as normal, followed him. I don't like the rain, Olive said. It causes sad. She flipped her green pigtail over her shoulder. You mean it makes you sad? No, I mean it causes sad. Seasonal affective disorder. 
the lack of natural light dampens the mood. Rainy days also mean it's a good day to bake cookies, Rose said. Why is Rose so, so into cooking? <laughs> Gemino rolled her eyes. Why do you care so much about baking if you aren't even able to eat? Rose stuck her tongue out at Gemini. You're mean. Baking cookies actually sounds pretty good. Maybe I'll have some tea to you. Uh, maybe I'll make some tea to you along with it. That doesn't make sense, but yeah. Uh, yay, Rose clapped hands. Oh. The burner caught fire, even though he was nowhere near the knobs. Abe was wearing a long-sleeved hoodie, and his sleeve caught fire. Abe's reaction was nearly instant. He whipped the hoodie off and smothered the flames against the countertop. He is being told by Olive to rinse the burn with cold water immediately and put aloe vera. Rose has already been prepared and put extra in the cabinets. Aww. I thought you guys were going to monitor things to stop these from happening. Did I? I, I did my part. I told you all I was just about to make tea and cookies. We're so sorry. The Bobby Dots exchanged chastised looks. Truly, we feel awful, Rose said. It's just that preventing problems isn't as easy as it sounds, Olive said. It's the Gen 1s. They have access to our displays. Oh. Oh, that's, that's a problem. That's a big problem. They seem to mess around with our programming and make things turn on when they shouldn't. Great. Just great, Abe scoffed. They're now trying to give Abe confidence and cheering him on, claiming that they will do whatever they can and to not lose hope. Thanks. Abe didn't say out loud that he didn't have much faith in the Bobby Dots' efforts. Two days passed. Abe is depressed. He has begun losing hope and also track of time. He hasn't eaten much either, fearing for his life that his own apartment could kill him eventually. He gained recovery of the burns after a week or so and goes back to work until he almost believes his life is back to normal. Until he went home one day. Uh, Abe worked late, so when he got home, he'd open the door and immediately requested lights, please. But no lights came on. Abe tried again. Olive, can you turn the lights on, please? No answer. He sighed and decided to turn the lights on himself. He reached for the light switch. As soon as he tried to turn the light switch on, electricity surged. Wow, this is amazing. This is like a domino effect now. He flung away from the wall and tumbled over the sofa, head over heels. His forehead hit the coffee table as he went. He flung away from the wall and tumbled over the sofa, head at Wait, never mind. That's, that's just a copy. Uh, his fingers felt like they were being stabbed by a million needles. His head hurt. He was nauseous. He's okay. He eventually regains his stance. Rose? Abe called out. The bobby dots appeared on the glass panel above Abe. What just happened? Abe asked. I didn't know you were interested in gymnastics, Gemini said. I can add that part to your entertainment uh, preferences. Olive fiddled with her glasses. I'm so sorry. It was my Gen 1 counterpart. She hijacked my control of the lights. I heard your command, but I couldn't respond. Okay, what can we do about that then? Olive stopped for a second. It looked like she was concentrating deeply. After a couple of seconds, she nodded. There, I rerouted the light controls so she can't get to them again. Abe didn't feel like eating a full dinner, so he ignored Rose's uh, nutritional lecture and made himself a tuna sandwich. His mom had made him a lot of tuna sandwiches when he was a kid. Halfway through the sandwiches, Abe looked at the Bobby Dots. We need to have a household meeting. <laughs> Among us. Meetings are good, Olive said. It's a useful way to discuss strategies and make plans. I'm glad you approve, Abe said. We can't... Oops. We can't have a meeting with just a sandwich, can we? Rose protested. Can we have snacks too? Knock yourself out, Abe said. Why is Rose so into food? It's so funny. They're like The Bobby Dots are amazing characters. Like they are, Their character development is just so good. It's it's perfect. Um, Rose frowned. Around 15 pages left. Really? Oh my gosh. We're, we're near the end. Somehow we're near the end. It's been so long. Um, that means go for it. Oh, goody. Rose clapped her hands. Okay, Abe said. Here's the deal. I think I need to take charge of what's going on here. I would like to speak to the Gen 1s directly. Maybe I can reason with them. They don't understand reason, Gemini said. They're too damaged. Looney Toony, Rose said. Thank you, Rose. Well, maybe if I can get to them, I can reprogram them, Abe said. They shook their heads in unison. You can't get into their crawl space, Olive said. It's locked. Abe is the smartest FNAF protagonist. Really? I, I like, I, 
I would probably agree in this sense. Like, he's actually lasted quite a while. Okay, then maybe I can cut through it. They shook their heads again. There's a steel plate above it. Abe sighed. Okay, well, why do the Gen 1s want to hurt me anyway? What did I do to them? I don't think they mean to hurt you, Gemini said. It's just that they're inept. Olive, for some reason, actually disagrees with Gemini. This is where it gets really bad. Oh no. Olive shook her head. I think it's possible the Gen 1s could be acting with malice. The Gen 1s are so are close enough to human form that it's reasonable to assume they're envious of you. Excuse me? What? What? Huh? <laughs> that's... That's a... Wow. That's a twist. The Gen 1s are close enough to human form that it's reasonable to assume they're envious of you. Oh no. Oh no, we have more human robots. No. <laughs> okay, the first thing I'm thinking of is the Charlie bots, of course. I... The Charlie bots are a possibility. Eleanor is even a possibility at this point. Why is Eleanor a possibility? I don't think it's Eleanor, obviously. Um... All I want to say is the front cover of the Bobby Dots conclusion, uh, it does have eyelashes and people have connected it uh, and, and it looks pretty much identical to the fourth Charlie. So if that is where this connection goes, like I'm throwing myself out a window. It like this is genuinely incredible. <laughs> like what? Envious, Abe asked. Envy is the personal pain that results when a being desires the advantages of someone else, Olive said. I know what envy is, but envy requires a level of self-awareness that I didn't think animatronics have, Abe said. The Gen 1s are pretty advanced, Gemini said. Not as advanced as us, Olive said. Olive seems to actively disagree, which is interesting. Hmm. I'm glad to... I, I'd be glad to research the very manifestations of envy if you'd like. <laughs> I have no idea what this means. Uh, I think the Gen 1s think you're Landon. Oh, Rose interluded. Abe looked at her. What makes you say that? Rose shrugged. I don't know. It just popped into my mind. Why would the Gen 1s want to hurt Landon? Abe asked. Landon didn't have freckles, Gemini said. <laughs> yeah, that totally explains it, Abe said. They're not answering the question. He shouldn't have eaten that sandwich. Abe reached for the last of his sandwich, but as he did, his stomach roiled. A wave of cramping grippled his intestines. You're still hungry, right? Rose said. Are you sure you don't want to heat up enchiladas? I'm going to be sick, Abe said. He stumbled toward the bathroom. Nausea can be caused by a number of conditions, Olive said. Bacteria and viruses are common causes, but others include vertigo, ear infections, intestinal blockages, liver failure, meningitis, and migraines. If you don't feel good, how about some calm music, or music to calm you down? How about piano, classical strings, or would you rather have something more upbeat to distract you? They're just overloading his senses at once. Gemini chose a song. What sounded like tribal drums began to play over the speakers. Are you going to eat the rest of your sandwich? Rose asked while Olive and Gemini tried to be helpful. After a couple of dry heaves followed, finally Abe collapsed on the bathroom floor. The toilet flushed by itself. Thanks, Rose. He mumbled. He threw up to dribble jumps. <laughs> Poor baby, Rose said. You lost your sandwich. You should make another... Shut up, you dolt, Olive interrupted. He doesn't need any more food. He needs to hydrate. I don't think the drums are helping. The music changed. Loud saxophone music began to play. <laughs> Abe really would have preferred the drums instead. <laughs> How about silence? Abe yelled. They all shut up, and then immediately Olive and Rose began arguing. Abe got himself together and walked out of the bathroom into the kitchen, despite Olive and Rose still arguing. Gemini was following him around like a puppy. Can you please leave me alone for one second? Can you leave me alone for a couple of minutes, please? Gemini let out a harumph uh, before she disappeared, storming off the screen. Rose and Olive just went dark. Abe sat in his bed and stared at the ceiling, thinking... 
He remembered getting food poisoning after he'd eaten some bad chicken a couple of years before. What he felt now was similar to what he'd felt then. This wasn't the flu. Something had made him sick. The tuna? Or something else? Had he been poisoned? Abe sat up and thought. Did the gem ones even exist? <gasps> Whoa! Imagine. That would... That would be the perfect end to the story, honestly. He finds out the Gen 1s didn't exist. I mean, obviously not the perfect end. Like, I don't know what they would do with the rest of the story, but that would be a huge twist, and I'd be all for it. Uh, but the fact that he's even thinking about it, like, the authors here are, are amazing. Uh, if they didn't, and they didn't even... And they didn't poison Abe's food, who did? Were the Bobby Dots even being as helpful as he initially thought? It's a red herring. Okay, well, way to spoil it. <laughs> A week passes, and he has lived his life in fear, always having the bobby dots ignored and not acknowledging them. If the lights were off and didn't respond, he'd walk through the apartment the best he could. Now he is sitting at his laptop in the office that's in his apartment. Typing an email to his mom, he has to lie about his experiences with the apartment. How has my apartment tried to kill me? He thought. Let me count the ways. <laughs> Oh my god, that's a, that's incredible. Uh, that reminds me of when in Frailty, they, they were like, Jeremiah, are you the prankster? This is literally the exact same kind of, not the exact same plot, but near to the same plot as Count the Ways, where, like, the Bobby Dots are trying to kill him in many different ways. Oh my god, this, this book series... It's phenomenal. It's superior to everything else I've ever seen in my life. Uh, first, his shower had scalded him a few days before. A cord running to his bedside lamp had nearly strangled him. He'd been tripped by things left out and electrocuted multiple times. He had started moving through his apartment in darkness because he was afraid to touch light switches when the bobby dots didn't turn on the lights for him. He sat back and relaxed. He looked around. He loved having an office in his apartment. And the new one he had, he now had in the Pizzaplex was great too. At least that was true. Can't you believe it, Mom? I actually live in the Fazplex Tower. It doesn't seem real. Abe stopped uh, typing. He couldn't tell his mom what he was actually thinking. His ideal life had turned into a nightmare. But what could he do? He couldn't go anywhere. He sure couldn't call anyone to look into the problem. He wasn't even supposed to be in the apartment. Abe then typed a few more words. The Bobby Dots are such a big help. The problem was, Abe was doubting his Bobby Dots more and more. He wasn't sure they were on his side. If the Bobby Dots were the ones causing all the problems, Abe was in a world of hurt. He couldn't move out, and without the Bobby Dots on his side, he didn't have any help to deal with the dangers. Abe was stuck. And alone. Yeah, it, it's this weird dread of, um, of, like, loneliness even when you're not alone. It's like, I'm alone... No, Physically, I'm not alone in this world, but like mentally, I just feel, you know, isolated from everything, and that's perfectly okay. Um, but it, it's a horrible feeling. He looked back at his email and typed, "I have to get back to work now, Mom. Love, Abe." He clicked send. He wasn't lying about getting to work though. He had to find a way to get to the bottom of the Bobby Dots' malfunctions and stop them. The accidents were getting worse and worse. He might not survive the next one. Abe needed to catch the Bobby Dots in their life and figure out a way to trap them before they killed him. Abe closed his eyes, his mind filled with the image of the Bobby Dots. He sat back. But because his eyes were closed, Abe didn't notice the trailing end of a cable flit past the office doorway. He also didn't see that same cable slither up into the trap door. He did, however, hear the trap door close. These lines... Absolutely beautiful. He rushed out of the seat to the kitchen. Um, the trap door was was shut. Did he imagine that? He could have sworn he heard it. But he... Sorry, I completely messed up that line. Did he imagine that? He could have sworn he heard it. He knew he did. He looked around at the back panels of the Bobby Dot screens, and he couldn't shake the feeling of goosebumps going down his neck. Wait. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! I didn't want it to be a cliffhanger. 
I didn't want it to be a cliffhanger. Okay. Now that... That changes things. The reason that changes things for me is because... I... Like, that puts the story down for me, unfortunately. I... What I wanted from this two-parter is I wanted two stories... Uh, that were... That had... Uh, two separate endings and they just kind of they follow the same protagonist and the same sort of environment and I was I was really enjoying like the environment that they were making the world building the character development I was enjoying all of that and I was hoping that we would get a conclusive ending to this story and then the next story uh, it would be like them actually moving on to fight the the Bobby Dots or they found more Generation Bobby. I don't know. You know, I really wish this wasn't the way it was. But at the same time, I think we're going to read the Bobby Dots conclusion and we're going to look back at this and think, I'm so glad this is the way it was. Um, so this is uh, part one of the mega story of Tales from the Pizzaplex, the Bobby Dots. What a phenomenal part, can I just say. Absolutely, it's almost flawless, I would say. It's it's almost flawless. It's, like, without even, like, reading the thing, like, the like the actual book, just reading the leaks, it's, it's already S-tier. It could even be, like, superior S-tier, like, like, above an S-tier. It probably brings every story, like, two tiers down. It's so good. I I love this. The writing, amazing. The characters, amazing. As I've said, the environment, amazing. The freaking lore of the the sun and moon. And we got DJ Music Man. Let's not even forget about that. Like, we got so many things in this story. And it's all connected to the security breach Pizzaplex. That's that's amazing. So Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Everybody's saying thank you and uh, and other things. All right. Well, that is the Bobby Dots part one. I hope that you guys all enjoyed this mega video. I don't even know how long it is. It's like two and a half hours, right? Probably. But um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. We are going to be moving on to the epilogue, which apparently is insane. So... Be sure to check that out when that releases. I'm probably going to go record that right now because I'm so intrigued as to what this epilogue is going to be. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you later. Goodbye.